So, it has been a month since Ruby Frankie and Jody Hildebrandt were sentenced. Um, and we know that in this case, they pled guilty back in December uh, to four counts of child abuse. Now, if you haven't been following this case, it is the case involving um, a mommy vlogger, Ruby Frankie, uh, of Eight Passengers YouTube channel, and her business part partner, Jody Hildebrandt, uh, who's a therapist, and their weird, twisted, religious, extremist abuse of Ruby's kids. Uh, two, specifically, two of her children that for some reason... They believe we're possessed by demons or something and viciously, horribly tortured like prisoners of war in uh, Jody's, yeah. you know, big million dollar mansion in Utah. So they were arrested. Um, it was three months before December. It was last year sometime. And it was shocking. This little boy, like right away, we heard this little boy escape from Jody's house, remember? And went to the, started knocking on neighbor's doors, asking for food and water, wearing clothes that were way too big for him, um, and had wounds like duct tape about, around his wrists and his uh, ankles, and asking for food or water. And, you know, the neighbor called nine one and that's how we all got to this point they got arrested uh and we've been going through the court process well a month after their sentencing now the internet has been flooded with body cam footage um body cam footage we have security camera footage from the neighbor's home when the son originally the little boy walks up and knocks on their door and is sitting there waiting for the cops um, and them taking care of him. We have the body cam footage of them going in Jody's house, arresting them, finding the daughter locked in a closet, uh, interviews with the two of them, which neither one of them would talk. They both wanted a lawyer. Uh, we have police interviews with the husband, Kevin Frankie, Ruby's husband, because we've had a lot of questions. What did Kevin know? What is his involvement? Because I almost... Like he was around for the abuse that was pre Jody, their part, you know, the mom and Jody's partnership. Yeah, um, question, and there was abuse stuff, because let's but... be honest, there was abuse before Jody came around. It just wasn't to this extent. Yeah, um, it was like I'm going to take away your bed and you're going to sleep on the floor for three months. Uh, yeah. you know Mess that kind of thing. Food things take like away that. their yeah. right to eat. Yeah. Their right to eat. Can you even imagine those words coming out of a parent's mouth? They did on literally a platform going out to the world. She posted this to YouTube. Her yeah. saying she was going to take away her kids right to eat. Ugh, I gross. So Anyway, this body cam footage is, it's super disturbing. Um, it's all been really hard to watch, but we're going to break some of it down and talk about what stands out because, and there's a lot like, and there's even more coming. Like this is probably something that's going to be talked about for a while, um, you know, in the upcoming weeks because so much, the volume there, the courts are releasing it all. They're like, have it all. Good. Love it. Other courts yes. could take. The case is over. Yeah. Let us have it all, please. Yeah. Now, there are things redacted for the children, which I appreciate and I think is great. I um, Like blurring out their faces, blurring out their names, blurring out the wounds and things like that. We don't need to see all the gore, um, despite how curious people can be. All we know is it was bad. You know, um, the young son, he had been tied to a floor with a rope. Yeah. And he had moved around to the point, you know, because like when you're tied, a little kid's going to move. Like it had caused such severe rope burns. I think, I don't even think a little kid. I think anybody, anybody, sure. Anybody. Yeah. Anybody would get damaged. Yes. Um, so, and they put honey with cayenne pepper on it, saran and then, wrap, and then duct taped yeah. them. <sighs> All right. So we heard we've been hearing all kinds of crazy stuff that they did to the kids. Well, now we have actual real evidence like 
a journal, Ruby's journal, like footage of them making the kids walk around a cemetery and pull weeds and pick up glass for hours. We have actual footage of that, that they recorded the kids doing this. Okay, uh, that's weird, but okay. I mean, that, that, that was the philosophy. So if you guys don't know, basically what they were doing is they believed these kids were possessed by demons. And that's what is explained throughout Ruby's journals um, and uh, several other things. But anyway, l- let's let's get into it. So they think they were possessed by demons mm-hmm. and Ruby was concerned and I'm she was brainwashed by Jody is what Ruby claims, which I don't know, <laughs> both insight. Um, but they're possessed. So they hard physical labor. And struggle is supposedly what is supposed to make them holy again and get rid of the demon. Mm, that sturdy hands, making clean them mind. right, making them fast, making them struggle, making them do hard physical labor. So they were forced mm. to like work outside in the middle of the summer in heat with no water and no food and no shoes. Yeah. Oh. Like garden for hours. Or with the girl that we talked about on one of the previous episodes. Um, they made her run as fast as she could barefoot on a dirt road. Yep. Oh my. Until she couldn't run anymore. Any it, yeah. horrible abuse. It is horrible. So can you imagine what those feet look like? And rocks tear you up. And like, you know, I know people out there are like barefootist there's this whole like oh yeah yeah thing about being barefoot mm-hmm. everywhere um but those feet have been conditioned and conditioned and conditioned can you imagine being somebody like myself i always wear socks or or shoes and i just go out on a dirt road and pull my socks and shoes off and run as fast as i can oh no oh. i can't i can't imagine it'd be horrible um I, so yeah, painful. your feet your feet aren't conditioned for that. The calluses aren't built up. It would it would rip your feet apart, uh, especially if you're doing it for a really long time. So we have again that footage of him going door to door, the little boy knocking after he escaped Jody's prison, basically, um, and that was really sad. Because, you know, we heard the 911 call and now we can actually see the image of that neighbor on the phone crying, you know, talking to the little boy, the the wife taking care of the little boy, what he looked like walking up to the door to knock on it. Like, you know, the the mm. police getting there. Um, and might I tell you, that little boy was a fighter, especially after you guys hear some of the things talked about, you know, in the journal, in Ruby's journal, where they talk about the things he said, the things he did, the way he reacted to the abuse, the abuse. He is a fighter, like for real. I, I'm impressed with his strength yeah. and getting out to save him and his sister. Like, Good. I'm uh, so impressed with his strength. You know, I'm an advocate for when people go through things in life, it makes, it ends up making them stronger. And that's being myself going through stuff when I was a kid and being a survivor through some of that. Um, it, as long as you work through it in a healthy fashion, it ends up making you stronger in those situations. However, that doesn't mean that you, create those situations like what Jody and like what Ruby was doing. Right. You can't abuse somebody to create a stronger person. Like that's you have someone that's supposed to be taking care of you and being your parent and protector who is creating abusive situations. That is problem. That is trauma. That is probably PTSD. I, I don't know. I don't know how bad this is. I know that I've heard statements about like, how bad the wounds were. They smelt. It was making well, like yeah, the can people we, who yeah. worked on them gag. Yeah, that's new information. So, yes, that's oh, in the uh, body cam footage. That so that's in the body cam footage. Um, basically, well, here, we'll talk about that in a second. So 
I wanted to go through this basically throughout the timeline of, you know, we see the little boy and then we see body cam footage of them going into Jody's house. Okay. The neighbors knock on the door and they pull her out by the arm. And she's like, do you have a warrant? And she's on the phone and it just was cracking me up. And they go in there and they look around and they find the little girl locked in a closet. Is There seems to be some kind of confusion where they think she's a boy. And we know from the journals that I'm going to read from in a minute that they that they shaved her head as some kind of punishment um, to take away her vanity or, you know, caring about, you know, how she looks or something like that. Um, and she's in baggy clothes and she looks very scrawny, like emaciated, same as the boy, um, just without all the wounds and everything. And she's really untrusting of the police officer. She doesn't want to talk like at all. And the, he's like, look, I'm not here to hurt you. I'm a police officer. I'll sit here with you as long as it takes. Like the police officers were really kind, super kind, which is great to see and really gentle. You know, they didn't like swoop her up and run out of there. You know, <laughs> They yeah. sat there with her and let her take her time. That's good. Um, but yeah, it was uh, it was nice to see them being so gentle with her. Then I saw body cam footage of outside of Jody's house where the officer is talking about they started cutting off the because we have ambulance footage, too. Um, and in that ambulance foot footage, they're asking him questions about like how those got there and they're cutting off the duct tape. And the officer described it like as you could smell the flesh. Yeah, that's what I heard too. The, that you could smell it and it was grossing out like ambulance, the uh, EMTs, and there's, they aren't doctors. So now I want to skip ahead to a, um, a jail call, okay, by Jody right after she's first arrested. When she's first arrested, <clears throat> she makes a call where she says, I was being set up. To end up here. I have a story to tell when I get out of here. I'm going to do everything I can to protect these children. They're being horribly abused. Nobody wants the truth. The devil has been coming at me for years. The devil uses kids and parents who don't hold their kids accountable. Can't even raise kids anymore. It's abusive to make them even sleep on the floor. Yeah. Take, she takes zero accountability, you guys. Uh, and she she said that somebody told her the pictures of his wounds basically are going to destroy her. And she said that he did it to himself. That, you know, we didn't do that. We didn't do that. You know, he just moved and wiggled to make that happen. He did it to himself. Right. Yeah. He tied himself to the floor. What? Like the absolute delusion. Yeah, I hope she doesn't get out anytime soon. <laughs> okay, here's what Ruby said. Away. Here's what Ruby said when she was first arrested. This is a and this is to her husband, Kevin, uh, August 31st, 2023. This is a witch hunt. The devil's been after me for years. <laughs> Kevin says they'll be in the hospital for three days. And Ruby says, it's just so weird. Just like not necessary. They're trying to exaggerate this. Whoa. And Kevin said, they didn't show me pictures or anything, but the way they described it, it was very serious. Uh, so in Kevin's interview with police where he's initially told he tells them like hey my you know somebody told me to come pick up my kids uh but he would not say who he would not say who told him that now we do know, know now that was ruby through his lawyer his lawyer said ruby called him and was like hey come pick up the kids and he raced down there to pick up the kids but she didn't tell him why and he gets pulled into the cops and at first they're questioning him in a way where they're like Ask him all these questions because they don't know if he knows anything. And they're trying to figure out, does he know anything? Of course. And they determine, no, he doesn't know anything about any of this. 
So then they tell him, you know, like why they're there, why they're involved. You know, he tells them that he hadn't seen her since like he saw her the 18th of this month, which was August. I'm, I'm guessing, um, cause she wanted him to sign over cars, their cars to her name only. Um, and yeah, <laughs> There's a second interview, guys, where he goes way more into depth than all this. And I want to talk about that because it's nuts. I had no idea. Like, I knew that it would be extensive because we've heard of what Jody's done to families in the past and how she's ostracized the husband and made him the enemy so that she could get close to the wife and abuse the kids. This is Jody's MO, you guys. She went hard on this couple. Like, and I don't know if it's because they had a lot of money and clout in a YouTube channel and she picked them because they would benefit her the most or what, but she went all out. Okay. All out. So anyway, they determine, um, well, he says he's never been to Jody's home. He, he literally knows nothing. The last time he saw the kids is when he moved out in July on July 25th of 2022. So a whole year um, and that he, the wife, like he agreed that she would, um, take care of the kids and handle all of that. And the wife never talks about the kids and all he does is support them financially. So he deposits money in the shared bank account every month and they use that money. Well, uh, they're like, okay, yeah, well, like we don't think you're a part of it. So look, your kids, uh, your son was found walking door to door asking the neighbors for food and water. And he was so emaciated and had wounds on his wrists, all of his extremities, his wrists and his ankles. And he's being hospitalized and CPS is taking away custody and nobody can be involved with him for at least 72 hours. Like you can't see him. Nobody can see him. He's taken out. He's in DCFS custody. And he literally immediately gets so emotional and is like upset and crying. And um, like he he literally didn't know. He had no idea, uh, except he was being heavily manipulated. So fast forward to his interview where he tells the full story. And that is that Ruby and Jody start talking in 2018, which we already knew this. Remember, they... Basically, one of their sons was having issues. He went to some kind of camp and got Jody as a therapist. And that Jody, and he describes it as Jody says that the parents have to fix themselves to be able to fix the kids. So she, when she's a child therapist, talks to the parents more than she does the kid. And he thought that was super odd. Well, he said it got super strange in fall of 2022 because the Hannah's is, which is another family tried to convince Ruby to join this connections group, which is Jody's group. They went to a conference together and Kevin said it was a conference full of like a bunch of man hating women who just wanted to rag on their husbands. But then he saw all these people. He got up on stage saying their marriage is so much better and he respected those people. So it confused him. Well, Ruby gets sucked deeper and deeper into all of this, and he starts to believe it, too, because things start getting better with Ruby after he starts going to the man groups because he was told he had a porn addiction and that they had a really deep conversation, husband to wife, where she said him asking for sex a whole bunch and him asking her to wear lingerie deeply hurts her. And it was so emotional and touched him so much that he agreed to do all of this. And But things got better with her, even though they weren't having sex anymore. And then Jody moved into their house. And Jody moved into their house and told him he was no longer to go upstairs. She literally manipulated this whole situation to the point where he, wa he couldn't go in the kitchen and eat without his wife's permission. He could not go upstairs to any of the bedrooms at all. That that was Jody's part of the house, and Ruby was now sleeping with Jody in the bed. He was he could leave whenever he wanted, but he couldn't come home whenever he wanted. And they would go into a bedroom and lock themselves in for five for like five hours at a time with another woman named Pam and have these spiritual sessions, and then they would come out and be like 
they would have all these spiritual revelations and stuff. It's weird. So after all of that happens, okay, which we learned about all this through police interview with Kevin, that's when the separation started. When they started pushing him out completely and then all of this happens, okay? It's just wild. Like, it shows you the religious extremists and how Jody finds a family and takes them down. And and it was getting to the point where Ruby literally drained the kids and their shared banking account and was about to sell the house. Yeah. And he was so complicit with everything because he just wanted to satisfy her. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why I... I don't know about the statement about she went hard here because I've seen multiple. I think this is standard. I think that's just what did she move Joby into all died. of their houses? Um, I I don't know, but she pushed every husband away. She, she did drained bank accounts. Um, she's and, literally uh, like a con artist. She tried to take over the eight passengers YouTube channel. Yeah, she's a con artist for sure. Absolutely, it's insane. Yeah, yeah. Well, then. I mean, that that's just a lot. Like, that is so much. You know, they even found a bag of $85,000 in cash at Jody's house. And the cops were like, you know, well, they drained the bank accounts. Like, we're going to try to see if we can put this back in the kids' bank accounts to get them their money back, which was really nice. Yeah. Um, Because that probably was the kids' money. <laughs> it probably was. No, I mean, what I think the kids are due are an equal part of the eight passengers channel. They should have, they were yeah. partners. I they don't were. care what anyone says, dude. I think that if a parents create a kid channel, I think everything should be paid for. So like if the parents are the editors, okay, pay them a fair editor wage and then split everything, whatever money is left after all payments are made, the cost of, editing all of that stuff then it should be split by whoever is in front of the camera in my opinion so tell me what you think about this but i agree with you 100 percent. the kids are an equal part they should all get equal shares so catch this when ruby or jody moved into the family's house kevin claimed supernatural things started happening like dishes flying out of cabinets things no floating no. foot footsteps on walls and ceilings and he said look i'm a smart man i'm an engineer he said it was really hard for me to believe all this stuff but then that kind of stuff was happening at our house when she moved in it happened at her house when we went over to her house and like i did that's why he let her move in apparently their house is because they went to her house and saw that was happening and ruby really wanted to help her because she believed the devil was after jody so let her move in to their house. And then that sort of started happening at their house. That she was under a spiritual attack. Hmm. Weird, right? Like, does he really believe all that? I don't know. I think <laughs> she was setting it up. Right. Something. Like she was. Oh, my gosh. That's what I thought, too. Is she like pulling strings and, after they walk in a room to pull a dish out of the cabinet? Like, what is she thing, doing? And the thing is, is I've had real like situations with what I would consider ghosts or whatever an, an other entity is like real ones myself. Um, but they're usually random. This is very incidental like like a horror movie to the situation yeah it's like yeah it's like you're calling on ghosts at will okay yeah it does kind of seem like that weird it's it is weird um so uh to get into some of the journal entries which are really really horrible um I, I'll probably post them to our Discord so people can actually like read through them yourself. Um, but they're absolutely insane. Like I, I just can't believe what I just can't believe that she wrote all this stuff down. Yeah. Um, I'm only gonna read a few of them, and we can dig more into them. It's just like really super hard to read stuff like it's child abuse and it's like the worst of the worst kind of child abuse um when it comes to like 
torture. You know what I mean? It's just outright torture. But one that I felt like really let you in on where the kids are at is he turns 12 tomorrow. I never envisioned him being 12 and still pooping and peeing on himself. Satanic choices lead one to becoming destitute, even in the most affluential homes. Like he is doing that, defecating on himself because he's being horribly abused. What do you mean? Like, yeah, that is so shocking because the abuse is that bad that he has lost control. Yeah. It, it's that bad, lady. You are literally abusing him that bad. Uh, another one which um, was interesting to me in letting you know where the kids were at is that he was making these rhymes, okay? Um, my mom starves me, calls, calls it fasting, my mom won't lift two fingers to bring me food because all she does is lie on the bed and eat brownies. She says he does this all day. All day he makes rhymes about and then she quotes them. And these are them. My mom says she is the most loving mom in the world. Blah, blah, blah. If I can't ever go home, then what's the point in being obedient? I'm going to run away. This is what she considers him making rhymes all day. That she's lazy and won't bring him food. That she starves him and calls it fasting. He's going to run away. That, you know, she says she's so loving, but blah, blah, blah. What's the point of being obedient if I never get to go home and have, like, my life back, you know? It's absolutely just horrible. Um, you know, they, there's talk in here about them shaving the daughter's head. Um, you know, that at one point... They ask her if she thinks she made progress and, you know, she's like, yeah. And the mom's like, no, you didn't. Compares her, told her son he's a snake. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, it just. And you can tell in here when you read through them that she really believes all of this. Like, she thinks this is a demon. Like all of these choices and all the things the kids are doing and saying, she's being convinced by Jody and herself now because she really believes what Jody is selling to her that the, this is a demon and they have to do all this to get the demon out. It, it's just like Chad Daybell. It's just like the Valo Daybell case when it comes to stuff like that. Like really believing that and that yeah. they're saving the kid. Now, I don't know if Jody believes it. And there's an interesting part in a phone, a jail phone call where Ruby, after she starts to realize Jody's a liar, she's been lying to me. She's not that she starts to change and flip. And, you know, even in her sentencing, she hears like, or she says like, you know, the day that I was arrested was like an intervention. It was the best day. Um, and she feels like she's woken up from her delusions, basically. Um, that phone call conversation was interesting. Uh, it's hard to empathize with her, though. Like, you can't really empathize with that yeah. very well. Because you still made the choice to horribly abuse your kids. Well, it's also she was already doing horrible stuff before Jody, So, like, I don't. Right. Okay. Right. You know? I don't it, care. It's a cool. <laughs> it's a cool story, Ruby. It seems like you were a very willing participant in yeah. all of the uh, madness. Yeah. And unfortunately for Ruby, Jody didn't do any of this stuff with any of your, her other people. So who's really to blame? Right. Like she did this to her niece. The duct tape. Yeah. And making them sleep outside and the hard labor. She did do very similar things. I just don't know the extent it went to. Not like this, dude. This is a to a whole nother level. Yeah. 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 It's, this is this is uh like these kids were gonna die. Yeah. They were gonna die. Mm -hmm. They they truly were saved. 
So, so who's really to blame? I've been saying it from the beginning. I don't care what Ruby says. I think Ruby is equally as guilty as Jody. Equally deserves the same sentence. Yeah. So that's a, a basic general overview of a bunch of the stuff that's been put out. We can dive deeper into certain pieces of it. Cause like I said, that Kevin interview is insane. Like I would love to only like listen to part of it on here and then talk through it because it's insane. And also, I mean, there's many pieces of it that are just wild that we could dig deeper into. Um, but if you guys have any requests, you know, of pieces of it that you want us to talk about, definitely let us know. Um, I'm really glad that these women were held accountable and that these kids were saved because if they weren't, they were seriously going to, it was going to be a murder case, you know? Yep. It was. And I'm glad it wasn't. I'm glad these kids can heal and live a life so uh let us know what you guys think